Campus Revolution. So hi there, my name is Nuruddin and welcome to another edition of Campus Revolution. This is the only program designed to inform, educate and entertain our youth. Our aim is to help the youth in dialogue bring out the issues worth discussing and finding answers to them. Today we'll be talking about the fact that the government have given us the permission to go back to school, I mean the final year student, to go back to school and continue education. But do you think it is in the right sense to do that? So hold on, invite a friend to join us and also tell friends to, you know, subscribe to this very channel. We'll be right back after this break. BusyVendor.com is a retail and wholesale e-commerce platform created to give vendors and store owners the opportunity to sell items, services, virtual and downloadable products online by signing up as a vendor, creating a personalized store page, and adding products. BusyVendor.com has in place the most flexible payment methods acceptable worldwide, even mobile money. BusyVendor.com also serves as a directory for stores, vendors, and individuals who sell from home. To the buyer or customer, BusyVendor.com is simply an online shopping mall where you can get whatever item you will need. It is more than a marketplace. So welcome back from that quick commercial break. Um, joining me in the studio today are two wonderful friends of mine. And I'm happy they are here, finally, because I've been trying to pull them for a very long time. And Raisa in particular has been, you know, rejecting my calls, but finally Ouch. I've caught you. Ouch. Raisa, how are you doing? I'm doing good. So you tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, so my name is Binti Raisa Keita. Mm -hmm. I'm a final year student of Ghana Technology University College. Okay. Yes, I'm an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. a model, and also a beauty queen. Mm. Yes. What type of model are you? I'm a fashion model. Mm, I yes, see. Please. Andy, Andy. Yeah. The very boss. <laughs> How are you doing, Andy? I'm doing pretty good, and you? Oh, I'm also fine. Andy, tell us a little bit about um, about yourself. Okay. I'm David Andy Asidi Jr. Yeah. And I'm a level 200 student of Heritage Christian University. Okay. Offering computer science. Mm. And I'm the general managing director for Conrado Business Startup Promotion Service. I see. And also an entrepreneur, a public speaker, and a motivator. Mm. So, you guys, clearly you can see that uh, I'm joined with renowned people <laughs> in this very country. Young, but renowned. <laughs> So, um, guys, have you? I, I think by now you should be aware about the fact that the government have reopened schools for the final year students. You are a final year student yes. and you are also in school, you're doing the online thing. How has this feeling been like, especially being in the house and studying for a very long time, using the online, you know, things? Well, in the beginning it was online before they told us to actually come back to school. Yeah. The online was quite stressful because sometimes you are having lectures and then your network will go off. Mm. Or you would get like your bundle will get finished and all so it was quite stressful you don't really understand you know face to face is quite better than mm -hmm. online yeah and we are not used to that kind of system of schooling and all so it was a bit stressful okay. and then they said we should come to school so that's another thing Andy, how, how was the online education like well it's a little bit difficult it has been a little bit difficult because i'm looking at the way things was going mm -hmm. some of us even the money to get to purchase a bundle was even a little difficult. Mm -hmm. And even not all of us were having smartphones. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we find it a little difficult. But I think we are coping to it. But do you think that um, reopening school is the best thing the government have done so far? Or the best thing to introduce as of now in this COVID-19 um, season? No. Because looking at um, the COVID-19 itself, I think government shouldn't have um, opened schools um, because we all know that um, COVID-19 is being um, transmitted mm -hmm. through personal contact or yeah. body contact yeah. and when school opened um, we realized that um, the final years were going and the government told us that there are protocols that he has put in place mm -hmm. but looking at this recently we saw that our um, confirmed cases have been increased so I think it wasn't the right way to do that. Right, so listen to your um, introduction about the online thing. You said that um, the face-to-face -face interaction was quite better than the online thing. Mm -hmm. So w looking at this very statement of yours, I think the government did the right thing for us to go back to school because you cannot actually have that great understanding from the online perspective mm -hmm. unless you are really close to a teacher and talking. So isn't this a blessing in disguise? It's a blessing, but there is a but. 
they actually opened school and it was a good thing to do mm -hmm. but they weren't actually ready the measures weren't put in place the right measures but we saw videos and news you know covering the the schools in ghana being fumigated and you know cleaned up for and ready for you know this particular projects to come back not all school actually had the chance to be fumigated not all school were able to get the kids they were talking about and all those things and then you know in boarding houses they share bathrooms they share all those things mm -hmm. so i don't think the primary and secondary schools were actually ready for that maybe the investors you know you can have your own room your own hostel and everything but coming to the secondary school and all those things i don't think they were actually ready for that i see adi so should the government take back their words and bring the kids back home? For now, um, I think it cannot be done. We are looking at it, they are already there. Mm -hmm. And you don't know those that they will come back home, that they will be infected by the virus. And bringing it back home, to they can share it to the community people. So I think that's not the best way. But government should put protocols in place so that we think everything will be in order. So what you're saying is that they should still stay in the school. Now that they are there, yeah. they should stay in the school. Yeah. But here's the fact that we have recorded four cases in a school I don't want to mention because I I don't want to be the one spreading the bad news or good news yeah. either. But we've already recorded students having coronaviruses and parents trip into the school to go and take their awards and they are denying them. Do parents really have permission to go and take their, uh, their award from the school? Riza. I don't think they should actually do that because if they are saying they've actually recorded cases in that particular school mm -hmm. you actually going in there you are putting yourself at risk that's one but it is my daughter or son in the school yes but it should be logical you've put them in the care of um, the school authorities for a long period of time maybe three months or two months mm -hmm. so allow the school to do what they are supposed to do whether the school um, the teachers or the people in charge are not doing the right thing just allow them to do what they are supposed to do you going in there you're putting yourself at risk you go back home your whole family will be at risk your community and everything what of the child you are taking maybe the child has it you never know but at least they being there the teachers who actually know what to do and how to actually handle things maybe the people who had it who did they come in contact with and all that so should they stay there and all die no people are not actually dying dying you could check the um What's the name? The recovery rate. Mm -hmm. People are actually getting better. The recovery rate is for the general public. Mm -hmm. But here's the fact that students are stuck in one place. And we've already recorded four cases mm -hmm. of this coronavirus mm -hmm. in that very particular school. Mm -hmm. And it takes about 14 good days before this virus can really, really show. Mm -hmm. Now that these students were living on campus, um, Andy, isn't it better for them to come home, you know, and self-quarantine and go to isolation or get tested then stay in the house better than stay in the school and getting infected about over 100 or 500 students at a go? No, I think, you see, um, when this same student comes home, I'm not sure the virus is going to stop. Mm -hmm. So what is the best thing? I think the best thing is uh, for the MH, um, the Ghana Health Service, mm -hmm. they should put uh, protocols in place that's educating and sanitizing mm -hmm. um, students mm -hmm. on how to um, observe the personal protocols, mm -hmm. um, observing the social distancing, using of um, sanitizers and washing of hands, all those things. I think that will help. Mm -hmm. But frankly speaking, I went to um, Tuasi. Tuasi is a community at Insawom and we went to do a donation. The Washington Foundation went to do a donation of face masks. But when we got to the primary schools, trust me, none of the students there were wearing the nose masks. But here is the, f the fact that the government have made it clear to us that they've given PPEs to mm -hmm. every school. They've provided, you know, all the necessary kits for the schools to be using. And the social distance was not there. Only one teacher. So when we got there, we were like, what is going on? Because you, you've told us clearly that, and this is a deprived village, a village that they are all stuck together at one place and nobody is, you know, really, really looking at them. Do you think that their concentration is only in the capital areas? I think they are concentrating on areas that they think people will pay attention to. They are living out. That's why I said in the beginning, I was like, it's not every 
schools that actually got their PPEs and all the things. Mm -hmm. It's not every school that had a chance to get educated on what to do in cases of maybe someone getting it. I don't think they had time to go through all that. At least maybe the first week of resuming school, you could take that whole week and educate the students constantly on what to do, mm -hmm. like on how to comport yourself because now it's no more normal stuff. You usually go through orientation when you resume school, yeah. right? So they should have oriented the students on what to do and how to go about because now it's a new whole environment. Corona has come, but we can't put everything on hold. So we have to go with how things are supposed to go. Mm -hmm. So we have to go how things are supposed to go. So I want to once again tell you that we are being sponsored by busyvendors.com. It's a platform that you get anything that you want. They just log on to the website and you get it. We'll be right back after this very commercial break. Busyvendor.com is a retail and wholesale e-commerce platform created to give vendors and store owners the opportunity to sell items, services, virtual and downloadable products online by signing up as a vendor, creating a personalized store page, and adding products. BusyVendor.com has in place the most flexible payment methods acceptable worldwide, even mobile money. BusyVendor.com also serves as a directory for stores, vendors, and individuals who sell from home. To the buyer or customer, BusyVendor.com is simply an online shopping mall where you can get whatever item you will need. It is more than a marketplace. So welcome back once again to Campus Revolution and my guests for today are Raisa and Andy. They've been so resourceful from the beginning of the program and we are still continuing our conversation though. So he, we now have established the fact that I've gotten the news that, you know, cases have been recorded in their secondary schools mm -hmm. this when we stay quiet would increase the number of infections in the school wouldn't this bring out demonstration as we've seen in the United States and those like black lives matters would, wouldn't the same you know problem be faced in Ghana as students life matters as well Mandy no you see, the whole thing is um, we educating the students. Mm -hmm. um, you see, um, Ghanaians, some of Ghanaians think that the COVID-19 is not real. Mm -hmm. And looking at it, even when I was coming, when I passed through La Paz coming, mm -hmm. I realized that people were not um, even on their nooks, mass mm -hmm. and a whole lot um, close to each other. Mm -hmm. So I think we should um, educate the people. Mm -hmm. um, this morning I was listening to UTV and there was one person, a recovered um, person from the COVID-19 and he was like, we should give him the opportunity so that he will come out to educate people. So I think the education is the key thing to do now. But isn't the government doing enough education because there is press conference going on here and there, you know, adverts going here, like everywhere. Isn't, isn't that information enough than to really, really sit down and care about our health? You know, it's the problem with we Africans, like Africans mm -hmm. is that unless we see it happening to somebody we know, we don't believe it. So now people are even, they even use it for a song, like, do you know somebody, do you know somebody? They don't know anybody who has actually like, recovered from COVID or somebody who has gotten COVID and person came back and was like, I have, like, I had COVID and now I'm okay. They are like, do you know something? Like, have you ever heard anybody say, oh, my uncle or somebody had COVID and everything? They won't prove. And that's something to the government is not really willing to actually put out that, okay, these are the people who are quarantined. These are where they are. These are the people who are at the hospital and all those things. So they don't actually see, they've seen white people, but they've not seen black people actually having this thing. So they are like, I don't know. It's not there. Do you get it? Okay, so this this question goes for both of you. Mm. If you were to be in power, which aspect will you invest more in during this very corona season? Would it going to be the health sector or the schools or the infrastructures that we have in Ghana? Andy? I will invest more in the infrastructures. Okay. I was looking at it and you see that our number keep increasing each and every day. Mm -hmm. And where are these people? I ask myself, where are these people? So I think... Um, the infrastructure buildings also count. So I will invest much in the infrastructure. But here's the case that you are seeing the kids to stay in the school. Andy? With the infrastructure, you see, um, we, we shouldn't base only on the students. Mm -hmm. But their lives also matters. And here's the case that they are fragile to this very coronavirus disease. And you see, even those who are well protected are dying. How much more these ones that are now, you know, getting to get hold of all these issues? Shouldn't the government rather invest more 
on the health sector to you know bring everybody home and provide the PPEs for these ones to stay in the house and also invest in the online education too as well. I think we should invest in both. You can't concentrate on one. So we should invest in both. Now we should invest in both. Yes. All right, so what do you say? <laughs> COVID actually made us realize that our health sectors are really, really not equipped for a lot of things. Of course. And if not for the fact that um, President, the, the um, past President Mahama actually built the rich hospital and all that, we would have been in real issues that like we're yeah, facing a lot of yeah, things. Yeah. So I think we should actually invest in the health sector because we really need it. You go to hospitals and then people are just sitting anyhow, lying on the floor and all those things. We are not equipped for this kind of issues. We are not ready for this kind of thing. So I think the health sector is what we actually need to invest in. In case you are experiencing headache, will you ever go to the hospital in this era? Me. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you go? <laughs> <laughs> I have been sick. No, I was sick. That was when I came back from tap riding. Uh -huh. I wasn't feeling well. And then it looked like it was COVID. I was like, me go to the hospital. I stayed at home. I got myself tabia. I took it. Was eaten. I'm okay now. I'm not going nowhere. Please, will you ever go to the hospital during this season? No, I will never. <laughs> But people are cute. You see, the mentality of Ghanaians are very, very, very strange. Mm. When you are sick, you don't go to the hospital. Daddy. But when, we, when they say voters' ID card registration, see okay. the number of people who are cute outside. Mm. You go and do that. I'm sure you've done your registration. Me, me, right? You are yet to go and stand in the I queue. Will not do that. But you don't go to the hospital when you are sick. I will not. <laughs> well, already, I will not. You will not. Mm. <laughs> so we leave the question to you guys. Would you ever send a simple headache mm. to the hospital during this corona mm. season? And which aspects in our economic system should the government really invest in? Is it the educational system or the healthcare system? Let me have your views on this very program and invite your friends to also mm. share their opinions on it. My name is Nuruddin and thank you guys so well for you know uh, uh, for coming and I'm, I, I really appreciate the fact that you are here. Thank you, Rice. I thank you, you Andy. I, I, I hope you know to have you guys on the show next time. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> By the way, your last words, to your your shout out or last words to your friends. I can't leave you go like that. Shout out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I know you have a ton of lists. That you I can't even think of one person. Okay, so my shout out or my last words are that. We should all be serious with this and COVID is real. Yeah. It's out there. So mm -hmm. we just have to follow the precaution and everything. Just do the right thing. Stay home as much as you can. If it's not important, don't go out. Just stay indoors. And Andy? Okay. First of all, I thank God for um, keeping us mm -hmm. through this pandemic. Mm -hmm. And my second time goes to you okay. for bringing me here. Oh, I'm blushing. Third time goes to <laughs> Mr. Conrad Kakraba. The CEO of Conrado Group of Companies. Okay. And one word I would tell people out there is that um, we should keep safe because this corona is real. If you think it's not real, I'm telling you it's real. So let's stay safe. So let's stay safe. The corona is real. Mm -hmm. Me, I've seen somebody with corona. I'm mm -hmm. lying. I've not seen anybody. <laughs> So he, he, there you have it. This is Campus Revolution. My name is Nuruddin. See you same time next week. It's a bye-bye for now. <laughs>